echo server. And echo server, we add a new file named echo. Package main. We'll just uh, take, take our example listener here and modify it. So I'm just going to copy it. Okay, so now we have a listener. He listens on port 9000. Right now he's printing the current time. So we're going to change him to uh, echo everything he receives. There are a lot of different ways to do this, okay? Um, one that doesn't work, which with some people were trying, was IOUtil read all. Can somebody explain why this doesn't work? Why doesn't this work? Nobody? The reason this doesn't work is in order to read the whole connection, the connection has to disconnect. So what happens is this just sits here waiting until the other until the client disconnects. As soon as he disconnects, this finishes, we get back to write, and then we try to write it. But this is disconnected, so we can't write it. So we can't read everything it sends. We, we have to read it in smaller pieces. Okay. Uh, this is also significant because something about TCP, which we'll see more of, is that TCP is just a stream of bytes. Okay? It doesn't do anything else for us. It doesn't tell how, much, how many bytes they're going to be. It doesn't tell us the format of the data. It doesn't say it's going to be a string or an integer. So if we want to do that, we have to add it to it. So typically, a protocol like this, it's either going to be, say, line-based, so it'll be in a line and then do something with that line. Or it will prefix uh, the number of bytes with the length. So it might have the first eight bytes will say, oh, I'm going to send you 437 bytes. And then it will send those 437 bytes. So it'll have the length and then how many it will be. We'll read the length and then we'll read however many it said it would be. Okay? So that's typically how we would do it. So we can't do this way. We could read a single byte at a time or some number of bytes. And the way you do that is in a for loop, you'd say uh, slice a byte, you know, maybe we'd give it 1024 or something. Uh, and then we'd say dot read. So uh, if there's an error, that could indicate all kinds of things. We're just going to break. Okay? So we're going to break on an error, and then that will just close the connection afterwards. John Mill 26. Yeah, sorry. Um, and then we're going to write back whatever they sent. So notice this bit here. So we write back only the number of bytes they sent us. Because remember, it can fill uh, up to the size of it, but it doesn't necessarily fill all of it. So we use colon n there. Uh, and then I don't care how many it writes. And then if a or not equal, it will break. Uh, and we just do that in a loop, and it will read in up to 1,024 byte chunks and write them back out. So let's see if that works, this approach. So we're going to go to echo server, go run, or I'm just going to do go install, and then echo dash server. So it's running, okay, it doesn't print anything or anything like that. Then we're going to use telnet, localhost 9000. I'm going to say test, hit enter, okay. So it, Echo that. So this is working properly. So this is one way to solve it. If you guys want that, I'll put yeah, it out there. Uh, another way to do it is with a scanner. Uh, so scanner has some nice things about it, but it'll make this a little simpler. So we can say uh, buffio.newscanner, and you'll give it connection. Right, so con, and then for scanner.scan. And then we can use string con, and then, OK. And the idea here is we'll read a line, and then we'll send it back out. Uh, oh, that, Q. It's control square bracket, and then it brings up a thing that you could type Q in to exit telnet. I should mention that Telnet is a protocol, 
we're not actually using the Telnet protocol. It just happens to work <coughs> for what we're doing. Uh, and so that works too. We read a line and it echoes it back out. Okay, one line at a time. <coughs> Uh, and so then the final, the very easiest way to do this is surprisingly simple. We say copy, and you give it the connection and the connection. So that copies the connection to itself. Okay. <laughs> and it totally works. I think that's funny. So does that seem just like absurdly simple? Uh, I forgot to install it. Does it make sense why that works? So everything it, re it reads from this guy and writes to this guy. So it's reading from itself and writing to itself. It's echoing everything back. The scanner might be useful if you wanted to add something in, like a chalk coloring. Yes. Because this is inside. Remember, this is doing a read and then a write. But the buffer size is some amount. So the line has the advantage of it is a line at a time, which is sometimes useful. But I just think it's funny how simple that turns out to be. Now, in real life, uh, what you would probably do is you would not do this. What's wrong with this code? It does not send anything. It's just like, I will show you what's wrong with this code. Only one connection at a time. I didn't get anything back. It's kind of small, but I didn't get anything back here. And the reason why is he's stuck in this for loop. He's stuck right here. So this, this code is not, it's single threaded. It can only do one request at a time. So how do we fix that? It's really easy, right? We say go, give it a function, and then we move our code to do the stuff with it into, into it, okay? And there, now it can handle potentially millions of requests. We start a go routine every time in the loop for each connection. So there's one go routine per connection, and then we do stuff with the connection. And you go back and forth, it goes to accept. So theoretically, let's see if this works. I think it will work. So we get our test. That works the same way it used to. We connect again. There, now we have another connection. And like I said, I'm not joking when I said millions. It can handle millions. Um, this, this is a scalable TCP server. Okay. But I just wanted to show you that this using the Go is pretty easy. It's very easy to make this code scalable. Um, so that's how we can make Echo. It's pretty easy. The second program, which we'll get started with today and finish tomorrow, uh, is Redis. We're going to make our own Redis server. So Redis is a NoSQL database that's very simple. And it's used by lots of people. Okay? And the neat thing about Redis is its protocol is based on Memcache, which uses this protocol which is line-based. And so you say get and then the key, hit enter, and it gives you back the data associated with that key. And then if you want to save the data to it, you say set key and then the data, and it saves the data to the key. It's a really simple protocol. And I describe it here. So I say get key, should write out key, you know, uh, should write out value key and then key value. Uh, so if, if you're thinking in terms of telnet, you should be thinking like if we're here, I would say, uh, let me clear that. I'd say get and then my key is test. Okay, it wouldn't echo it back. So actually what I'd probably do is say set key value and then I'd expect get key to return value. Right, understand? That's how Redis works. It's a simple database. A key value store. I can store data in it and get back data. Okay, so if I set key value, I do get key, I get back value. So we're gonna build this database. Okay? I have Redis open over here, by the way. So uh, just sitting here, so I can show you how it works, just like the actual Redis database. Um, it listens on port 6379. So oh, let me do there so I'll tell that localhost 6379. So I'm, I'm connected to Redis, and I can say get key. Uh, it doesn't have it, so it return negative one. So let me set it. So I say set 
key value. And then I say get key and it returns value. Understand? Don't do this dollar four thing. Don't worry about that. Just do this. Everybody understand what I'm trying to do here? This is like TCP server. It's really simple. Got it. Okay. So that's what we're going to build. Okay? That's what we're going to build. It supports the wheat too. Supports what too? The wheat. D-E-L. Okay. 